Hey everybody, it's the Walker. So, uh, who are we doing tonight? Well, tonight we're going to talk about how to night hike and not die. The night has a way to kind of transform the woods. We're definitely, um, we're not nocturnal creatures, you know. Um, the temperature, well, it's a day before Thanksgiving, and I would say it's probably about um, in the mid 50s, and now it's well below freezing. And of course, it's dark. And um, we're, <laughs> human night vision isn't exactly stellar. Uh, it's a primate thing. What do you want? Which reminds me, why do they always do that um, night investigation for Bigfoot? Isn't Bigfoot a primate? You know, ha, that's another matter. So, what are the um, dangers during a night hike that you have to overcome? Well, it, during the summertime, I've seen rattlesnakes at night. Uh, this time of year, I've seen um, skunks. You know, I've never had an actual, like, <laughs> that type of encounter with a bear, but I had heard things just run off, you know, at night. And there are bears in this area. Uh, usually people are kind of on the low side. Uh, this trail I'm on right now, I've seen, at least in this section of the trail, I've seen two people in the last like four years. You know, obviously more people use it, but it's, a, it's because there's no parking. There's like, you know, four mile stretch here where there's basically no one here. Um, which brings up another problem. During night, you, know, you could even be in like a like you know an area that has houses. There's a house probably a mile and a half, two miles away from here, but there's nobody going to be coming here, especially on the um, night before Thanksgiving. There's just nobody going to come here. Then you've got um, you know what is it um, Black Friday and then Cyber Monday. If you get lost or see you break your leg, there's nobody coming, you know, and you don't have to be in Uganda to be totally isolated. Just a really good mechanical injury and you're, you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, what other problems are? So you have the usual mechanical injury, um, critters, they're not such a big deal, but still, you know, um, yeah, slip trips and falls, that's all part of the mechanical injury thing. Getting lost, so you have navigation concerns. Um, the creepiness of the woods at night, it is definitely more creepy during the day. It doesn't bother me because I've been doing it for years, but for the uninitiated, you know, it can be kind of overwhelming. I mean, you know, it's dark. like really dark. You know, so there is that. Uh, in general though, let me first show you the uh, actual gear I use during a night hike and then we'll proceed with the night hike and I, 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 I can show you some of the tips then. I have these little reflectors which I put on um, back of my pack. I can take them off, put them back on again. At night, I like to put them on if I'm going to be crossing roads because they reflect headlamp in the front, these little reflectors in the back. And this trail, I know, crosses uh, two roads. So, you know, I kind of want the car come up behind me to see me. And for times that I don't want it, they're, they're removable. So it's kind of a small item you can carry in your in your pack to increase your visibility of your pack. It's also great if you put your pack down. You, know, you can see your pack far, pretty far off. And they're inexpensive. It's a it's one of those Walmart type items. There we go. Now this time of year it's honey season, so I have with me. This orange vest with the um, reflector on it. This is great if I do a lot of work on the road, like if I'm jogging like four or five miles on the road or something like that. But it also helps uh, hunters see me. And because if you're night hiking, odds are you're moving around um, at dusk. For light, 
Well, I always want to have a flashlight and a headlamp. There's the flashlight. Headlamp. These flashlight and headlamp both play on the same team. By that, I'll just flip it around a little bit. I have no idea which battery goes where, but you know something, it doesn't matter because um, they're interchangeable. Very easy. If one runs out, I can always um, rob Peter to pay Paul. Another advantage of having a flashlight, if you take a look, I choose a flashlight. This is Army Tech Wizard, and this is the Army Tech Viking. They're both pretty reliable flashlights. There we go. But the flashlight, you can take a look, has a bigger... Um, has a bigger reflector than this headlamp. And that gives it a lot more throw. So this helps me reach out a lot farther than this can, although this is very powerful. There it goes. Plus, Two, you know, what's that saying? Uh, two is one and one is none. So, you know. Toilet paper. Hey, you know, if you have to go to the bathroom, you have to go to the bathroom, you know? All right. Um, here is a uh, cordage kit. There's a, a main um, a main ridge line. And some uh, smaller line. And it's basically a whole kit ready to set up instantly a tarp which we have here and our tarp is actually a sil nylon poncho with uh, tie-offs on it so if for some reason you know it should start to rain real hard or I end up staying out the night I could set this up as a shelter or I have rain gear there we go I like to have little uh, reflectant um, cordage on stuff whenever possible, too. Make it more visible. We've got uh, more knife. This is the light my fire knife. You know. And I have a lighter in my pocket. These are uh, CR123 batteries. Both these lights will take a uh, CR123 battery. In addition to the 18650. These are cold resistant and they're, they'll last for a long, long time. So if I run this type of system, I like to carry these batteries as well. We have gloves. Hands start to freeze up when it gets cold. You know, I have a, I have a jacket right here and a hat, but you know, sometimes it gets, these gloves are really nice. A Tyvek suit. Basically, it's got all the pros of a large trash bag, um, extra layer clothing, windbreak, weather resistant, and sort of breathable. And, and this time you get pretty visible. I have a uh, little uh, survival kit stuff right here in a waterproof bag. A waterproof bag is also a great place to uh, put my phone. If I should be out and it starts to pour rain really hard, I don't want to lose my phone, I can toss it in here. Which reminds me, um, the phone, there's also a little flashlight function on there too. Everybody knows that. But you always got to think kind of, um, you know, there's a third flashlight right there. And I, I actually, I took a picture of the trail map. So there's an, a, um, a map on this phone as well. Should I need a map? That's one thing I like to do if there's a trail map, you know, before I enter an area, I'll take a picture of it on my phone. Why not? Now this phone, I got phone service here. 
It's also an emergency thing. Speaking of emergencies, um, one, one part of the safety pre precautions is have something called a float plan. By that I mean, tell like a responsible person what you're doing, where you're going, and when you can be expected back. And by responsible, I'm not talking about like your ex-wife who hates your guts or your drunk uncle. Somebody, somebody responsible where, you know, if I'm not back in four or five hours, I'm supposed to be in a certain place, check up on me. Um, and stick to that float plan. If you decide to change that float plan, tell the person, the responsible person. If you can't tell the responsible person, don't change your plan. You know, stick with your original plans or there's no point of having a float plan. So let somebody know what you're doing, what your ETA is, and where you're going. Now here is um, Nightcore F2. I carry that. And the reason is, is that I can, um, two reasons. I can charge my phone. But also, these batteries right here could be used for this flashlight right here. So it's really another, um, another depot. Rather than carrying a regular power bank with me, I might as well carry one that I can also use to charge my, um, to instantly refuel my flashlight. Although one advantage of modern uh, headlamps and flashlights, it's very rare that I have to do a battery change um, in the field. And here we have a, uh, a Topps uh, Turley PSK rebuild. You know, we've got a little, all our little survival stuff, a uh, little compass. I did a video on it. So that's a general kit. Um, I don't think I forgot anything. Oh, oh, security. There are bears in the area, so I have the bear spray. Okay, let me uh, pack this up and we'll, um, we'll continue on the night hike. Here's why we carry a couple of lights when we're night hiking. Wouldn't take much. You want, you know, you stumble them through. I think you're on the trail. That's about 15, 20 feet. Bam! Boom, 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 boom. And it's a pretty steep slide from there. And there's water right there. What do we got here? Oh, we are not. No. No, no. We're not going underneath that. Look at that. Absolutely not. That is just ready to, um, any second that could go. So we're going around that. Nope. Uh, definitely not doing, um, not playing that game. Keep going. There we go. Wet, slip, sloppy stuff. Oh wow, there's trout. That's a little brookie. That's so cool. I don't know if you can see it, but um, whoop, there it goes. Another brook trout. Oh, that's neat.
There you go. Little brookie. We'll leave them be. Of course, you gotta watch again. Mud, dirt. All a little harder to see at night. A little off trail here. Um, there we go. All right, there we are. Extra throw light's kind of nice for that. Um, there's a trail marker right there. Another thing too, anywhere where you have moving water, except in this rock, you know. Look at this. See this all, it easily just collapses. Because there's moving water. So you gotta be real careful. Undercut um, rocks, wet, slick, slick leaves. Is uh, you know still a slip, still a trip, and a fall. Well, yeah, what do we got here? Isn't that special? Hmm. Well, we'll risk this one. There we go. Looks a little less precarious than the other one, but still could go. Calculate a risk. It's a minor little thing that broke off. We'll step right over it. We're getting closer to civilization. Look at this street. Now here's where um, those uh, chartreuse or zombie green uh, reflectors we put in the back of a pack. I'm in like dark clothing, you know. Camouflage, dark navy blue, black. Those reflectors are going to show like a Christmas tree and a headlamp. It'll show up great for oncoming traffic. So we're pretty visible. We made it. There we go. Huh. No real big deal. Um, just keep in mind the basics. Have a flow plan. Carry a survival kit. Carry um, Hold on a second. Carry a Garments in case 
condition should change, like a poncho, uh, hat, gloves, whatever. And uh, have fun, you know, it's a really enjoyable thing. And it's a great way to cover more ground if you're running late. Okay, so if you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Y'all have a great night. I, uh, I gotta get going.